called what? Machine. If I may ask you, what is a machine? You tell me that a machine is what we use to make our work easier and what? Faster. And we use machine in our everyday life. This marker you are seeing is a machine. The board you are seeing is a machine. Anything that makes work easier and faster is a what? A machine. But as a science student, you need to take an in-depth analysis of what a machine is. When a layman tells me that a machine is a device that makes work easier and faster, I can accept. But not a science student. Rather, a science student will say that a machine is a what? A device or tool that makes it possible for a load at one end to be overcome by an effort at what? Another end. Now, if I pick up this marker, my hand is my what? My effort. Why the marker is my what? My load. Without my hand, will the marker go up? No. If I remove my hand, I have removed my effort. Will there be a load? No. So that is what? A machine. Now, let's get to the what? The calculation aspect of machines. Remember the key words I told you whenever it comes to calculation. Always concentrate on the parameters and not on the what? Story. Now, let's look at these questions together. Let's read. The pitch of a screw jack is 0.45 centimeter and the arm is 60 centimeter long. If the efficiency of the jack is 75 upon 5 percent, calculate the mechanical advantage. You have your options, okay? Now let's proceed. Let us pick out our parameters from all the stories and see where we can proceed from here. Number one, what was the first parameter they gave us in the question? The pitch. And you use letter P to represent what? Pitch. What was the value of the pitch? 0.45 centimeter. Now look again. What is the next parameter they gave us in this question? The length. Because they said that the arm, which is the length, is how many centimeters long? 60. So when we talk about long, we talk about what? Length. And what do you use for length? L. What is the value from the question? 60 centimeters. The next thing they gave us was what? The efficiency. Remember that a machine cannot, we cannot be 100% efficient. It is not possible. It's only an ideal machine that can be 100%. A real machine can never be what? 100%. Now, if my machine is 75 upon 5%, I will simply place the symbol for representing what? Efficiency. And what was the value? 75 upon 5%. Then the question asks me to calculate what? Mechanical advantage. I will present that with M dot A. Meaning what? Mechanical advantage. Equals to question mark. Why did I use question mark? That is what I'm looking for. I don't know it yet, right? So I will ask myself, for them to have given me my efficiency, they are not stupid. They are simply telling me to use a formula that is efficiency what inclined. And there are three basic formulas for efficiency for your stage. Now, the one that I feel will be applicable is efficiency equals to what? Mechanical advantage over velocity ratio times 100%. Now, look at the options we're given. None of them contains units. Do you know why? The mechanical advantage of a machine does not have units. It's always what? Unitless. Why do I say so? Mechanical advantage generally has the formula what? Load over what? Effort. The two of them are forces, true or false. So if I say Newton, which is the unit for force, over Newton, do you know they'll cancel each other out? So does the mechanical advantage have a unit? No. Does velocity ratio have a unit? No. They are all what? Unitless. Now let's proceed. I know my efficiency from the parameters I extracted from the questions. I don't know my velocity ratio. I don't know my mechanical advantage, but once I know my velocity ratio, I think I can get mechanical advantage through a force. Now, you ask yourself again, what type of machine is involved? Look at this question critically. We are talking about what? A screw jack. And a screw jack, we're told that the velocity ratio is equal to what? 2 pi r over p. P stands for what? Pitch. Or 2 pi l over p. Now, r and l both mean the same thing. This one is the radius, this one is the length. They both deal with what? Distance. Now, between the first and the second, which one do you think would be ideal? The second one. Why? We are taking emphasis on what? Or laying emphasis on what? On the length. So let's proceed to get our what? Velocity ratio. So V dot R is equals to number here yeah, is what? 2 pi times. What's the value of my length? 60. Everything divided by my pitch. What's the value of my pitch? 0.45. Does it make sense? Now, 2 times 60 should give me what? 120. 120 times pi will give me what? 120 pi. So my velocity ratio is 120 pi divided by 0 0.45. So I've gotten my velocity ratio. And as you can see clearly, there is no unit because it is what? Unitless. Now let's pick the answer of our velocity ratio and place it inside our formula to get what? Our mechanical advantage. I ask again, what is the value of the efficiency we're giving true or false? And what is that value? The value is 75 
over pi percentage, right? Equals to, do I know my mechanical advantage? No. So what would I write? M dot A. Do I know my velocity ratio? Yes. What would I write? 120 pi over what? 0 0.45. Times something, and what is that thing? 100%. Do you agree with me that percentage will go with percentage? You agree that? Do you also agree that 25 can go in 75? How many times? Three times. Do you also agree that 25 can go in 100? How many times? Four times. Now, looking at this, if I decide to cross multiply, won't it be better? If I cross multiply, I'm going to leave mechanical advantage standing alone. So let me take away this four by doing this. Four and four is one. True or false? Why four and 120 is how many? 30. So I have 30 what? Pi. We are going to use everything here to multiply here. Are we good to go? Now from 75, what is left? Three. So this part becomes three over pi times. We use this part and take it what? To multiply this part. What is remaining here? 30 pi over what? 0 0.45. Equals to what do you think will be remaining here? Mechanical advantage, because everything is gone, right? Yes. So I will write mechanical advantage. You agree with me that pi will cancel pi? True or false? So 3 times 30 will give me what? 90 divided by 0 0.45. That is my mechanical advantage. Now, I tell students, you can actually solve these things without using calculator. Because in your exam standards, they might decide not to give you a calculator. So what do you do at this point? Let's proceed. At my numerator, I have a 90 divided by my denominator. I have a 0 0.45. I remember I told you in my last class that instead of using decimal point, always convert to what? Fraction. What do you think for 0 0.45 will become? 45 over 100. Because I'm shifting the decimal point how many times? Twice. Now, division can be changed to multiplication. And when you are doing that, you're going to take the reciprocal of what you have here. Meaning your denominator will become your numerator, while your numerator becomes your what? Your denominator. So let's go. Mechanical advantage will become... 90 times 100 over what? 45. 45 and 45 is how many? 1. 45 and 90 is how many? 2. What is 2 times 100? 20. So we've gotten our final answer. Mechanical advantage is equal to what? 200. Then you can go for that and tell them Q, E, D. Meaning what? Quite easily done. You pick your options.